As promised, we're having more Cooler Master air coolers on the channel, and right before the end of the year, we have, I think, two more to go. So it's going to be quite interesting to compare them because I'll be testing them out in the same case with the same configuration of fans. And last time we did, we had Hyper 212 Black X Duo. Right here we have Hyper 212 Pro, and you would think that basically it's almost the same cooler, but the other one had two fans, this one has only a single fan. Well, we have a different fan, a bit. We have different uh, configuration of the heat pipes. And by that I mean they are a bit tilted towards the VRM heatsink. So in those terms they aren't really straight as they are on Hyper uh, 212 Black X Duo. And they're keeping the same formula regarding the Hyper 212 in general. But they're simplifying it, making it a bit different and just giving you idea about if you're really on a certain budget or you have a certain price category, uh, you have uh, different designs, RGB, whatever you want. So you can really actually choose from the Hyper 212 family to go with which you want. In those terms, I tried to find the price of the Hyper 212 Pro and it's been a bit, um, I would say, really hard to find it because if you google it and you write the price you get on the search tab you get 49.99 and when you click it it actually says 79.99 when we compare it to Ar arctic freezer which of course we have to do for the hyper 212 uh, black x duo you don't get that price per performance ratio because the freezer 36 actually does an outstanding job as we know and you get two fans on that one and it still looks quite nice i do have to admit it still looks quite nice now the hyper 212 pro in general some specifications it supports uh, up to lga uh, 1700 from intel and amd m5 and m4 socket the dimensions are 125 times 74 times 152 millimeters four heat pipes the same thing as the black x duo direct contact and aluminium fins so i don't think that the uh, heat sink is any different just the heat pipes are a bit differently shaped giving you more space towards the rams as for the fan we have sickle flow edge which is addressable rgb it uh, has gen 2 actually addressable rgb uh, 120 times 120 times 25 we have from 690 to 2500 rpms plus minus 10 percent the airflow is 70.7 cfm and that is basically almost the same as the fans on the uh, black x duo uh, air pressure is 3.61 millimeters h2o and this is all on maximum as well as the noise level which is 32.8 decibels now mean time before failure is more than 160,000 hours we have loop dynamic bearing four pin pwm and three pin five volts addressable rgb header for your lightning this one is in black version i don't think there is a white version and some features that they mentioned we have all new top cover design which kind of does look cool specifically because the whole cover is matte black finish with the cooler master logo in the middle and then you have some sort of writings in gloss black finish so it kind of shows in certain angles and that's really nice so sickle flow edge which does do an exceptional job with the heat dissipation while well, basically pushing the air through the heat sink and the heat sink then creating the heat dissipation and then because of the asymmetrical heat pipe layout is designed to provide more space for your rams and taking all of that into consideration we have a bit of a different cooler but basically the same cooler the only difference that i would say that we have addressable rgb and we have one fan less compared to the black x duo so those are the two main differences that i would say of course the cover on the top is also different but then again we're having something that is more like a traditional one like already i think 15 years old fan cooler 15 years old cooler that still kind of performs but i don't know why they are trying to go to the price near 100 this should be around and not above 50 euros because we get exceptional cooling this one is actually rated at 230 watts tdp for four heat pipes and such slim heat sink that is outstanding so of course i tested it on the same processor in literally every single benchmark is the same as the black x duo we're having md ryzen 9 x 3d and in the same case we have be quiet uh, pure base 501 why am i doing this in the other brand's case because i have 
Dark Rock 5 here in, installed, well, in the past review, and uh, just wanted to give you a comparison, what you could get. And this is already a third cooler. We're going to have a fourth and fifth cooler. The fifth cooler is going to be a tad smaller when we're talking about heatsink and everything in that design, because it's designed more for, not an, specifically for SFF cases, but uh, smaller footprint cases, because it's a bit too high for SFF builds, and uh, yeah, that that's basically, that sums it up. So benchmarks, we go to AIDA64 Extreme Edition, CPU went up to 93 degrees, clock speed 4700 MHz, and GPU 70 degrees. So basically what we got in comparison to Black Axe Duo is 75 MHz lower, which is okay ish let's put it this way i don't think that's the whole difference between that fa the dual fan combination and the single fan but still then we go to cinebench and a bit surprising results when we're talking about the thermals so it starts at 85 and it starts building up but it doesn't build up in the next four six seventh and eight uh, run we have 87 and then finally ninth and tenth we have 88 degrees so it builds up it does build up, but it does go above 88 degrees because what I did is I was surprised with the uh, thermals and I ran that 10 minute uh, throttling test in Cinebench R23 and I wanted to check out what is going to be the thermals. So it went up to 88 degrees ag again. The clock speed, it actually varies from 4950 to 4975, which is still solid because if we compare it to Black X Duo, that's the same thing that happened. And honestly, we get somewhat similar results, uh, 26,082, it starts with that one, and the peak was 26,272, which is a strange because we get quite huge difference, and then we have 25,820. So what I would say is that it performs quite well. It does perform quite well, don't get me wrong. It has a bit of a difference compared to the Black X Duo, just because I think of the additional fan, but we have a direct contact, so it should perform really good as it is performing really good, because as I said a couple of times before, I don't get some 360 AAOs to perform as this, as the Black X Duo, and not to mention the Dark Rock 5, what I tested, which outperform like quite a lot. So what we get here is a bit high, higher priced, cooler, but still a solid performer, uh, still does look quite nice, I do have to say, and a bit slim, a bit slimmer, isn't it? So it's a bit strange to give a verdict on this one, because it's silent under full load. That's the best thing that I encountered. Then we have a clean design with RGB. For some of you guys that like RGB, you'll go with this one. For some of you guys that don't like RGB, you'll go with Black X Duo. If you don't want two fans, you can always remove one, but why? It's there for some usage and it does uh, really use it properly. And then you get the strange price tag, which in my opinion, in general, shouldn't be that high. It's not like extremely high, but when you compare other coolers on the market that most likely will perform a bit lower, but still will pay not double the price, but... Uh, two-thirds of the price you'll pay for those coolers compared to this one and still get a bit lower. Uh, it's it's somewhere there. I don't know. I don't know. You do need to write a comment about this and what you think. I know you're going to go with Arctic Freezer 36 Eats Hyper 212 for breakfast, which I can't complain about. That's most likely true. And unfortunately, when I reviewed Freezer 36, I didn't use this processor. So I don't have any concrete results to actually put that into claim and to give you 100% some results, details and everything all together. But uh, all in all, it performs good. It's up, it's rated up to 230 watts TDP. It uh, is quiet, which is outstanding. The way you mount it, it's actually basically the same. The only thing that it's a bit different, and I do have to say that, is that since the heat pipes are a bit tilted for the RAM clearance, you're also getting limitations to access those two left screws with the screwdriver. Because the heatsink is a bit covering up those screws, so in those terms it's, it's, it's something that you need to know as well. But yeah, that's it. That's all that I can say. If you're still interested in the Hyper 212 Pro, you can check out the link in the description. 
with more details price tag and everything all together and that'll be all for today guys uh, thank you for watching uh, if you like the video don't forget to subscribe hit the like button click the notification bell and i'll see you tomorrow in another video thanks for sticking by bye bye